that gets in your mind, it's going to end up coming out of your mouth. And words have creative power. Do you understand that? God said, let there be light. And his words were so powerful because he's totally holy, totally pure. Do you know that the universe is still right now, as we sit here, expanding at the speed of light? Just because one time God said, let there be light. When we speak faith-filled words, it goes into the spiritual realm and begins to create and pull out of that realm that we don't see the things that we desire into this realm where we can see them. But when he says we, he, he made us a little lower than Elohim, we have the same ability to create. We are co-creators with God. Well, how did God create? And God said, and God said, and God said, and we said, and we believe we receive it, and we said, and we believe we receive it, and we said, and we believe we receive it. Now, watch. If you look in the, if you look in the amplified, it says they built it. No, it was in their imagination. They said, "Let us go to. We're gonna do this." And God said, "My Lord, if two of you agree, why is that so powerful? Is it because of your faith?" Yes, in one sense, but what it is above all is you are speaking spirit. You have the ability to create and there's nothing man can't do. Well, I want to call your attention to something that is very common today that is to do with uh, confessing positively to receive. Is it a reality in the lives of believers to confess positively and manifest whatever they desire to have? In our old teaching about do believers have power to create, I substantiated a number of important things that I'm not going to do again here. However, this subject keeps on coming back and it's common now with a young generation of preachers who have copped it from the old generation of preachers like uh, Kenneth Copeland, Gloria Copeland, Joyce Meyer, T.D. Jakes, Joseph Prince, Joe Austin, Andrew Mark, Benny Hinn, Jesse Duplantis, the late Kenneth Hagen, the late Frederick K. Price, etc., etc. That since man was created in the image of God, Genesis 1, 26-28, that simply means man is a speaking spirit and can call into existence whatever he desires if he speaks positively by faith. Now, because of these people's emphasis about speaking positively by faith to receive your good health, your house, your car, your job promotion, etc., is why we call them the positive confession movement. They say that if we trusted in Christ by confessing him as our Lord, therefore we can also be healed in our bodies and mind by simply confessing positively. This group goes on to say that uh, it's always God's will to heal and if you are not healed there has to be something wrong with you. They say that it could be that you are lacking faith, it could be that you are not confessing positively, it could be that you are out of fellowship with God or that you may be having a sacred sin that you may not have confessed. However, my dear ones, the truth has to be said plainly that the power to create is limited to God alone because we shall never be totally like God because he is our supreme creator. The Bible is very clear when you look at the book of Lamentation 3.37. It says, Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth, it not. Now when you use the, the version that is known as a NASB, it says who is there who speaks and it comes to pass unless the Lord has commanded it. More to that, we can also consider scriptures like uh, if we may consider Ephesians 1, 11, it says in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him that worketh all he thinks after the counsel of his own will. Another thing that we can consider is James chapter 4 verses 13 to 15. It says, Go to now. You say that today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get 
gain 14 whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow for what is your life it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away 15 for that you ought to say if the lord will we shall live and do this or that now, this is very important for us to consider. Another thing that I maybe need to also put in for us to uh, to consider is that Daniel 4.35, this is Nebuchadnezzar's testimony. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What does you? So, my dear ones, our God controls over all human affairs without limitation. Even the devil can't do anything without God's permission. I want us to actually factor in a scripture in the book of uh, Job chapter 1 and the verses 9 to bring clarity to what we are communicating. This is what it says in Job 1, 9, uh, actually taking it to verses 12. It says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Verses 10. Have you not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Verses 11. But put forth your hand now and touch all that he has and he will cast you to your face to love and the lord said unto satan behold all that he has is in your power only upon himself put not your hand so satan went forth from the presence of the lord so even when it came to afflicting the body of job satan had to receive permission from god and that is why i say that even the devil can't do anything without god's permission as a matter of fact let us also consider second corinthians chapter 12 this is paul the apostle saying that uh, in fact let us begin with uh, if we may begin with verses uh, verses 2 it says i know a man in christ who 14 years ago whether in the body I do not know, or out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a man was caught up to the third heaven, and I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. God knows, verses 4, was caught up into paradise and had inexpressible words which a man is not permitted to speak verses 5 on behalf of such a man i will boost but on my own behalf i will not boost except in regard to my weakness verses 6 for if i do wish to boost i will not be foolish for i will be speaking the truth but i refrain from this so that no one will credit me with more than he sees in me or hears from me verse 7 because of that surpassing greatness of revelations for this reason to keep me from exalting myself there was given me a thorn in the flesh a messenger of satan to torment me to keep me from exalting myself now pay close attention to that. Even Paul the Apostle himself, with all the abundance of revelation that was given unto him, it says that the messenger of Satan was permitted by God to continue to torment him. And now you hear people talking about that you can confess positively and receive whatever you want. Didn't Paul know all about that? What do these modern day ministers know that the apostles never knew about? My dear ones, since God has not given any of us unlimited dominion and faith is why nothing can come to pass on earth by human power and positive confession. You can confess all you want from morning to evening, but without divine providence, there is nothing man can bring to pass with his positive confession. And people who are sold out to this elite behavior of new age of christian science are indeed not submissive to the authority of god my dear ones even faith itself it is subject to god's sovereignty and anything you ask 
if it is not according to the will of God, God is not obligated to do whatever we want. Because even people who started this blasphemous teaching that is to do with positive confession, the likes of Kenneth Hagen, E.W. Kenyon, Olo Roberts, Maurice Cerullo, all of them died of some sort of sickness. Positive confession teaches people to live in denial and lying to themselves and others. That is why today, in this COVID era, the ones that are very much absorbed with this teaching of positive confession, their church buildings are closed, just like other post church buildings are closed who do not believe in positive confession. These are people, even when they do have a flu, they say that they do not have. Even when they have a headache, they say they do not have. It's completely denial simply because these individuals are actually self-deceived and they have no power that they claim to be having. We all survive by God's grace and mercy. David made it very clear in Psalms 60 to 11. He said, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this that power belongeth unto God. My dear ones, power does not belong to man, but all power belongeth unto God. And it is him who can permit things to happen, and it is him who might choose not to permit particular things to happen. God is the object of our faith. We do not have faith in our faith. Our faith is in God. It is him under his sovereign will that can choose to permit a particular thing to happen, or may choose not to allow a particular thing to happen. Do not follow these modern day preachers that are self-deluded to follow after their deception. They themselves are struggling and they are frustrated ab about several things, but they live in denial. And of course, they know it that w what they are teaching is unbiblical and they cannot defend it from the writings of the scriptures. You are blessed with blessings. A detailed teaching about this subject, you have to go to our YouTube channel, that is Kenneth Mazima, and then get that teaching that is to do with, do believers have the power to create? Shalom.